mother was deaf. I scared and alone like you. In 2018, A Quiet Place and Bird Box led a disproportionate amount of the cultural conversation, not by adding something new, but by stripping away what many of us take for granted. Whether you're being stalked by a masked murderer, an ethereal presence, or a creature content to eat you from the hair down, ambiguity begets suspense. Which is why sensory deprivation and impairment has become such a go-to for genre cinema. By taking sight, sound, or speech out of the equation, uncertainty is amplified in a way that initially appears more organic. The inability to see, hear, or speak takes the fundamental fear of the unknown and marries it with spatial and bodily awareness. Stepping into the shoes of someone who can't see danger coming, hear it approaching, or call out for help. Notice the troubling thread in all of this. On screen, these conditions often come part and parcel with fear and desperation, at the expense of those it claims to represent. None of these impairments should be used as a quirky hook to bait a curious crowd. Still, you're often going to see the helpless handicapped trope, employed with all the tact of Velma scrambling for her glasses as a monster of the week lurks nearby. On the flip side of this, you'll either get a non-acknowledgement or the differently abled imbued with some sort of spidey sense, from the sightless sharpshooting of the Book of Eli, to the mute mime routine of Lightning Jack, and the speeding sports car emotional seesawing of Scent of a Woman that can't decide whether blindness is endearingly cute or an inescapable hell. I got no life! I'm in the dark here! Do you understand? These conditions exist on a spectrum far wider than cinema will often acknowledge. Hard of hearing doesn't necessarily mean incapable of making out any sound, while visual impairment ranges from a loss of central vision, blurring and light sensitivity, all the way to comparatively rare instances of complete blindness. Even the most well-meaning and admirable attempts at inclusivity don't always pan out. One forgotten curiosity of the 1970s is Defula, the first, and to my knowledge the only use, of Sinoscope with the entire film performed in American Sign Language and narrated in comically literal English, it's a commendable effort at inclusivity within genre cinema, and it's also absolutely shit. Which isn't to say there aren't good or even great films that broach sensory impairment in thematically relevant, respectful, and rewarding ways. Children of a Lesser God was the first major studio motion picture to feature a hard-of-hearing actor in a leading role since the 1920s, with an Academy Award-winning turn from deaf actor Marley Matlin. The film itself is decent, if a little hokey, and it's clearly made for hearing audiences first, hard-of-hearing audiences second. I sure hope you like having every piece of sign language narrated to you by William Hurt. Why? Well, how about common courtesy? How about me getting out of here so you can mop the floor? A Quiet Place, while essentially about a world in which making any sound above a whisper is a death sentence, also guides us through a family embracing and utilising what could be perceived as limitations as defensive strengths. Sign language, lip reading, and an intimate knowledge of micro-expressions bond their familial unit on a level beyond mere survival. It's a new normal rather than an alternative reality while it unfortunately succumbs to implausibilities and cop-outs that detract from an otherwise well-executed study of interpersonal dynamics and tension management, it's rare to find a mainstream horror that doesn't use sensory deprivation or differently abled characters as cheap gimmicks or throwaway fodder. More recently, I bowled my eyes out to the staggering beauty of A Silent Voice. Of all the films I've seen that place hearing impairment front and centre, A Silent Voice is the only one that broaches it without the faintest hint of patronising concession. Shoko is initially exploited and ostracised in her elementary school by a small clique of bullies who feel inconvenienced and alienated by what they perceive as preferential treatment. Later in life, one of these bullies stumbles and strives to make amends for his reprehensible childhood behaviour. It explores the power dynamics that can be held over the differently abled community by those who don't require accessibility measures, how infantile resentments initially form and then fade away with age and empathy, 
and just how often discussions of the differently abled rely on how brave or special they are, rather than treating them as human equals, with their own flaws, hang-ups and desires. As for visual impairment on film, Notes on Blindness and Derek Jarman's Blue both offer stunning, deeply impressionistic depictions of diminishing eyesight. Comparatively, the Spanish thriller Julia's Eyes may offer a more narratively conventional portrayal of degenerative sight, but it's still assured and sensitively handled. Acknowledging the relationships between our senses and our equilibrium, Scares are drip-fed as Julia becomes accustomed to her visual impairment, while the audience is constantly stimulated by lurking peripheral threats. Julia's eyes works because it understands the metaphorical weight of seeing versus believing a woman's plight, while refusing to couch its despair in the defeatist idea that blindness is an insurmountable obstacle on the way to happiness. One of the most maligned and misunderstood films about visual impairment is 2008's Blindness. Based on the novel of the same name by Nobel Prize winning author Jose Saramago, it follows the rapid destruction of social and moral norms as an epidemic loss of sight sweeps the world, leaving only one person still able to see. The cast is racially and economically diverse, and we're never told where or when this takes place. It's a bold parable not only for how we respond to disaster, but how morality often falls victim to necessity, greed, and exploitative practices in a time of crisis. As the sightless survivors are quarantined and abandoned, society turns on itself and civility fails. The dynamics of control are shifted within the chaos, while evil is perpetuated without fear of having to see the repercussions. Blindness was not treated kindly upon its release. The National Federation of the Blind protested dozens of screenings, with President Mark Maurer lamenting that the film portrays blind people as monsters. Jose Saramago, the author of the original novel, called the work a disturbing allegory that depicts a blindness of rationality, before dismissing the controversy generated by its film adaption by stating, Stupidity doesn't choose between the blind and the non-blind. To be honest, both have a point that could have probably been better made without the name calling in hyperbole. So much of sensory deprivation in cinema highlights the lack of a fundamental form of perception, but here the loss of sight is shown as a bright, inescapable whiteness rather than bottomless dark. It's an abundance of light. By negating the visual distractions of the world and undoing the false airs of common decorum, this epidemic shows humanity as the most extreme version of itself. Strong, resilient and resourceful, or manipulative, coercive and cruel. It is, in a word, bleak. So maybe watch the way he looks after. It'll take the edge off and it's really lovely. Each of these conditions has birthed and supports their own cultures, languages, beliefs, and communities of expression and understanding. Exploiting these conditions for their easy peril and flimsy fear jolting isn't just in poor taste. Nice hearing from you, Carlos. Few even come close to capturing the highs, lows, and cultural nuance of life with one or more sensory impairments. For those who experience the gamut of life's emotions through these perhaps alternative perspectives, conflating an everyday existence with a waking terror devoid of sight, sound, or speech is some way off the mark, mean-spirited, single-minded bullshit. In a think piece for The Guardian, David Cox wrote, Films have often sentimentalised, frequently misinformed, and at best encouraged filmgoers to sympathise rather than empathise. Hollywood believed audiences would be repelled by disability. The whole area was assumed to be off-putting, acceptable only if accompanied by a stiff dose of treacle. Looking back, it's hard to argue with their assessment. For all its success, Bird Box is a cack-handed macaroni picture that plays out like the happening with less unintentional humour. Wait until Dark pities the visually impaired rather than understanding them, Mute does nothing with its namesake, while trashy nonsense like Don't Breathe makes uncomfortable parallels between losing one's sight and a debasing loss of humanity. Encouragingly though, there are positive hints of a sea change on the horizon. 
with more lumbering attempts rightfully receiving pushback, leaving thoughtful accounts and inclusive representation a deserved chance at centre stage. The Shape of Water used magical realism to explore the sexual and personal liberation of a mute woman, and won a Best Picture Oscar in the process. Lauren Ridloff in Marvel Studios' The Eternals, Lexi Marmon in the English dub of A Silent Voice, and A Quiet Place breakout Millicent Simmons are just a few amazing actors making waves in mainstream film who also happen to have sensory impairments. Off the screen, cinema chains are opening up more subtitled and audio descriptive screenings day and date with new releases, and there are no doubt countless films that I failed to mention in this video that do right by their subject matter. I am not saying stop featuring hard of hearing, visually impaired or mute characters on screen. All I ask is that we maybe stop using them as liabilities or condescending totems of concern, and start doing more to offer a platform for the unspoken, unheard and unseen stories that are out there waiting to be told. An enormous thank you to our Patreon producers Jennifer C, Claire MD and Nicholas Le Revere, as well as an honourable thumbs up for each and every one of these Patreons who throws a little something our way to keep the channel going. What films would you recommend that do right by the hard of hearing visually impaired and mute communities? And conversely, what are the most overused and embarrassing tropes you keep seeing crop up? Let us know in the comments while you're liking and subscribing and doing all that rubbish, and maybe check out our Patreon, where for as little as a dollar a month you can get your name in the credits, access to our private Discord, additional reviews, and a membership to the Inframe Out Film Club. We'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Until then, this is in frame out. Thank <laughs> you.